Okay, so we're here to talk about MIG welding, and MIG stands for metal inert gas. So when you're welding, usually you have a metal that's bonding your other two metals together, and maybe a similar metal or a dissimilar metal. And then you have an inert gas, and the inert gas is what prevents your metal from burning or oxidizing um, during the welding process. So this is our inert gas. And before we do anything, it's always a good idea to just roll the tank over. And we're going to take a look at our settings, okay? So over here, let's see if we can get that in focus. Over here, we have a tank of 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide, okay? Argon is a noble gas. It's used commonly for TIG welding, but for MIG welding, you can get away with a lower inert gas content. Carbon dioxide is also incredibly unreactive, and so both of which are going to prevent our metal from burning in the standard atmosphere that allows us to breathe. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure our regulator is bled out correctly. We're reading zero for tank pressure, zero for line pressure, and our regulator is loose. Okay. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our tank and make sure that we have tank pressure before we adjust our line pressure. So our tank pressure is going all the way up from 0 to 2,000 PSI. And what we're going to do now is we're going to adjust the outflow, our working pressure, which is at 0 right now. And we want to turn the regulator in until we reach 20. Okay, so now we're at 15 and now we've reached 20, okay? And that is CFH on the regulator, that's the black numbers on the outside. We're not gonna use LPM on the interior, which is the red numbers, all right? So once we have our inert gas ready to go, the next thing we gotta do is start to figure out what we're working with here. So we have a ground clamp and a torch, okay? Electrons are going to want to flow from, let's get the light levels adjusted here. There we go. Electrons are going to want to flow from the torch to the ground clamp, okay? And so oftentimes the question is, when I'm welding, can I get electrocuted? And the answer is no, as long as you're not between the circuit. But if you are interrupting the circuit, electrons will flow through you. Um, conversely, if I were to charge off the torch and the ground while holding either end, I would become part of the circuit. So the only time it's going to shock you is when you're interrupting the circuit. Okay. So the first thing you want to do with your ground clamp is clamp it to your table. And then with your torch, we're just going to hang it on our handle for now. And we have a torch clamp for our working table when we get that into the field of view. So the next thing we do is we've got to establish what our welding settings are. And so on the front of some of the welders, it will tell you the wire speed and it will tell you the voltage. And the voltage is going to dictate the material thickness. Now, if you don't know what your material thickness is, you can always measure it with a gauge. If you do know what your material thickness is, um, you can just go straight to the chart. So. Each welder is its own unique snowflake in that there is always a chart with the specifications that the particular welder you're using will run at. So over here, it's going to ask a list of several questions. So the first question it asks is, what shielding gas are you using? And as I said earlier, we're running on 75% argon, 25% CO2. So we're going through that row of the chart. And then it's going to ask what wire size you have for your welder. And that's going to be labeled on the spool of wire right here for um, the interior feed of the welder. So on the inside, you'll pull it off and there'll be either uh, 0.024 or 0.030 or 0.035 inches. And usually it's on the inside of these style welders, so I'll write it big on the outside. I know for a fact that this wire is 0.030. So we've got 75% argon, 25% CO2, and 0.030 inch wire diameter. Now for our test demonstration, we're going to be working with 16 gauge steel. Um, it's thin, it's not so thin that you burn through it, but it's not so thick that it's really hard to weld. 
and it allows you to do a lot of sheet metal forming, making boxes, and doing general shaping. So we're going to go over to the 16 gauge column, and it says set your voltage to 5.5 and your wire speed to 55. So we're going to bring that back over, like so, and set our voltage to 5.5 and our wire speed to 55. So at this point, we're ready to weld. All we need is a table and an outlet. So we're going to change our field of view and show you how to set that up.